How's everyone doing out there? Peace and blessings to the hearers and doers of the Lord's word. This is an apologetics message, and this is the awakening. Please hit that like and subscribe button. So we're going to get into this quickly. If there was no power within the word of God, if there was no power in God's message, and I'm talking about the message that comes from the Holy Bible. If there was no power in from Jehovah, if Jehovah was a false God and possessed no power, then he would be no different than any other religion. And Christianity would be no different than any other religion. But what we do know is that Christianity is unique from all other religions. Christianity is unique in a lot of ways. Christianity also is unique in the fact that God has came to earth to reveal himself within Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ is the son of God, meaning son is in is the lesser spirit of God. And that God is the but you can call Jesus Christ also the avatar of God. They Jesus himself told you who he was. This is the whole reason that he was killed. He told you himself who he was when he was asked that he was the living God came to earth. Now, the difference and this is the this is why Christianity is special for that reason alone, for that reason that God, the living, the creator, the living God at one point in time decided to come to earth himself to be a holy sacrifice. Now, again, Jesus Christ has the title of the son of God, the son of man, son being the lesser form of God in this sense. What do you what do I mean by that? God can be in multiple places at once. God placed his spirit, his spirit, the literal spirit, his spirit. Listen to me. His spirit came over Mary and impregnated her. God's spirit. God is not a man. OK, so if God's spirit is what is in Mary and impregnated her, what does that make Christ? You tell me if you say, you know, if you just have any type of sense of uh, deducing these things or any spiritual sense or any just half a brain, you understand the Holy Spirit. If God is a spirit and his spirit is moving in Kuwait, his spirit is moving in Dallas, Texas, his spirit is moving in Germany. You know, how how is this spirit? His spirit is moving in Venezuela at the same time. It's saving a baby over her. Like, you, how is it doing that? You understand? If God could not is not could not split him like it's not even splitting himself. God's spirit is eternal. We don't even understand how powerful God's spirit is. You know, no one has ever seen the living God in his in his full form. You we've seen Jesus Christ. That's what we can. We know God's character, God's person as that's his character as we can fathom it, as we can know it is selfless. You understand long suffering, but firm as well. Jesus Christ ain't no punk. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was not a punk. Look at what he did in the temples. You understand? That's how we should all be when it comes to evil, wickedness, and unrighteousness. But it's the power. The Bible says that if no one preached the gospel, then the rocks would cry out. The rocks of earth will cry out. If no one, if the word of God, before even Jesus Christ came to earth, or while he was... What before Jesus Christ came while he was on earth, people were still becoming saved. You understand that? Because God is speaking to people's heart. God can give people visions no matter where they are. God is the one who came to Abraham in the Abraham was in the midst of all of these pagan religions like it wasn't christian uh, judaism christianity the abrahamic religion wasn't the only one around at the time 
you had people worshiping uh, the Akkadians around, worshiping the gods of Sumer of the Sumerians. You understand? Abraham was around in the time of the Sumerians and um, the ancient, all these ancient figures and peoples that we know. Abraham came from that. Was in a well, he was around in that same land of the Chaldeans. He was in that. All of that. All of these things come from the same region. Every single one of them, they start from the same region. It's very telling. But God revealed the truth to Abraham. He revealed the truth that he was the only living God. He revealed the truth that Jesus Christ was to come. You know, he revealed the truth of the of his character, the things that he wanted. He revealed the truth of all these pagan gods as being not only not only are they being lesser than him, God revealed those pagan gods is not even being existing at all. So that's how we know that those things that these other religions and things like that are false because our God Jehovah told us that he validated that, you know, now we can t put this thing to the test. This is how you put it to the test because daily you can look this up. There's cases daily of new Christians. There's cases daily of people having an experience, meaning a visitation from God. There's people daily getting assaulted by demons, having spiritual experiences from the other, from the enemy and calling on the name of Jesus Christ and Yeshua and having those experiences stop abruptly. Not pills, not calling on the name of Vishnu, not calling on the name of, of Akamemnon, not calling on the name of Enlil, not calling on the name of Enki, not calling on the name of, of Zaxabarahan. They calling on the name of Jesus Christ. That name has power because the demons know it. Jesus Christ, when he set the men free, those men who are demon possessed in the garden of Gehesheme, Jesus Christ, those demons, they told him, they they bled, they pled with Jesus and begged him not to send them to hell before their appointed time. Jesus Christ had the, the power to do what he will with those demons. Jesus Christ had on the power alone to do that. Jesus is the one who alone can exercise the demon, the demonic spirits and demons that are in you and all of the, the illnesses, all of your your addictions. Jesus alone can stop, though, can fix those things to where you won't return to those. That is the right in the Salvation Army. They make you go to church. They give you the Lord because you can't do it yourself. A tiger can't change his stripes, but the power of the living God can do that. In the book of John, chapter 15, John was teaching about the Holy Spirit. When Jesus says, says in verse, um, we're in John chapter 15, verse 5, but now I'm going away to the one who sent me, and none of you seems inter and none of you seems interested in the purpose of my going. None wonders why. Instead, you are only filled with sorrow. But the fact of the matter is. That it is best for you that I go away. For if I don't, the comforter won't come. If I do go away, he will. For I will send him to you. Jesus Christ is saying that when he goes, or when he went away, when he was going into heaven, his disciples were sad. The people who were following him, who saw him living on earth, of course they were sad. Of course, that, you know, they didn't want him to go away. They thought he was going to liberate the kingdom of heaven on earth. He thought that he was going to liberate them like in the physical realm. But and they also, you know, didn't want him to go away as, as a teacher. They, you know, they taught him a lot and they met they were missing. But what he said is that when Jesus said when he goes into heaven, what he would do, he had to go ascend into heaven because that's how we're getting the Holy Spirit. And that's what we have upon us now. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. It says when he has come, he will convince the world of its sin.
That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's why people hate Christians. That's why people hate the message of God. That is the number one reason why, because it convinces the world of its sin. It makes people feel bad. It makes people feel like they're dirty, like they're filthy, like it's supposed to. That's how you stand up to God, a holy God, your fault, your heavenly father. That's how you're that's how you measure up. Like you need to be able to see and understand that it says. And when he has come, he will convince the world of his sin and of the availability and of the availability of God's goodness and of deliverance from judgment. The world sin is unbelief in me. Do you understand? Do, do I have to read that again or did you get it? It says, and when he has come, the Holy Spirit, he refers to him as he. The Holy Spirit is nothing more than God's spirit. The spirit of God, Jesus Christ, all of God's um, spirits, the avatars that he has, that's his spirit. God is a spirit. We don't know what that is. Like, we don't know how to classify that. You can't get a, give me a cup of spirit. We don't even know what that is. But God is a spirit. That's that's how he operates in this realm as spirit. So the Holy Spirit and when Jesus Christ died, what he did, he made availability. He made God's goodness available and the deliverance from judgment. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he delivered those who believed and put all of our, put their faith in him. He delivered them from God's wrath and judgment. Because the judgment of all, the, the judgment for all people was was on. God was judging all people. The judgment was upon all people. It wasn't just anybody saved from that. There was no no prophets of the day. There's no Noah's of this time. You know, Jesus is the final. Jesus is your only availability for salvation. Jesus is the final savior. He's not like there's no other. The final prophet. There is no other prophets. The final sign is what I would say. The final sign of God. And that's the best sign you can have. History's broken in half for that. A.D. B.C. Jesus Christ is the final savior. That is the only that is the not. No, he's the final prophet. There is no uh, other savior than Jesus Christ. He's the final prophet and savior. Now, it says that the world sin, the big sin of the world is this unbelief in me. If the world believed the things of this Bible and believed in the power of Jesus Christ, this world would change instantly. You know, we would actually begin to usher in the return of Christ. You know, with, right now, people are under like people are under grace, like God's giving people time to get saved. He sees time differently than we see time. God in his realm sees time, sees all points of time. So he's giving people time and allotted time to get their life together. And that's causing, that's delaying the return of the living God. The spirit, we have to usher these things in. We have to, like right now, the end times are happening, but it's all happening in God's time. Everything will happen in perfect harmony with in alignment with God because he can see all of the choices made and all of the decisions. And the the he can see the where those choices, the end result of where those choices lead us to, no matter which one we choose. So God's in his realm and he's still going to operate in his time. But more people must get saved. You understand? But the Holy Spirit is going to help with doing that. The Holy Spirit is what is what gets in the middle of two people when they have an argument or something like that. The Holy Spirit is what mediates counsel between um, Christians, between believers. The Holy Spirit is the counsel we listen to. The Holy Spirit is what comes and enters you and gives you direction and gifts from uh, God and gives you guidance and and tells and gives you guidance in how to follow the Lord and and disciplines you and and speaks with you and counsels with you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It's active. This is the power of the living God. This is the power of Jehovah. The other these other so-called gods and I'm using air quotes, these false gods, 
They don't have any power. They never did. It don't matter who you want to name from the Sumerian pantheon to the Greek pantheon to any other guy. Look at like this. They've been tested throughout time. You know, look at with Elijah. Look at with Moses. Moses tested Pharaoh's guys. Pharaoh had sorcerers and people using uh, doc, uh, powers from Satan and doctrines from demons. And Moses got he trumped them. You understand with Moses, Pat, Moses, God showed Jehovah showed power. Pharaoh's God stood. No, they were false. They're fake. So they couldn't do anything. He just felt it. He Pharaoh just didn't understand he was even being used by God. And that's what the Bible says. Bible said that, that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. After, you know, after so much wickedness, you can you do so much. God gives you over to a debased mindset. It's the same thing. How like when believers after so many times that God try to get your attention and you you be mocking God doing some of the doing the most wicked things. You know, your sin is unbelief and you stay in that. God will just be like, all right, OK, whatever. I'm going to give you over to that debased mind. God also sends evil spirits. You know, some people be having nightmares. They end up in psych wars. But God will give you over. To a debased mind. What does that mean? He'll just let you think what you want to think now. He won't even speak to you anymore. And now you'll be your mind will be shaped by the world. And who runs the world? Satan. You understand? So you start to build. That's how you get men who be like 35 or, you know, end up being 40. And now they transitioning into a woman and stuff like that. That's how. But this is why Christianity will not go away. And it's going to continue to grow. It continues to convict. New Christians come pop up. They pop up every day from all walks of life, from having experienced the power of the living God. That's it. You can't stop it. It's nothing you can stop. Men and women experience this. I just uploaded a short, man. This is a man who's been in jail. He's been incarcerated, but he's jumping up and down like he won the lottery when he's getting baptized. Because I'm telling you, when you in jail, you could have life in prison. But see, the Lord, the Holy Spirit can take you out of that jail cell. The, the Holy Spirit can take you up places. It can. And, you know, these men like these men finally have found peace. I'm talking about they didn't the peace that they couldn't find in the outside world. And they these are men. If you talk to them, they don't have no regrets on their life or what they you know, what God has put them through because they found the gym, the greatest thing of their life in, in the worst place. That's how we all are. You know, we might not have found it in jail, but I found the greatest gym of my life in the worst time of my life. You know, I've felt alone in a room full of people. Trust me, you know, I, I know how it goes. So there's power in this word, man. And you need to get in tune with it. Don't forfeit your your power for to Satan and to demons with just non-belief, because that is the greatest sin of uh, the world. And that's um, unbelief in Jesus Christ. So with that being said, this is the awakening. I am super solid. I'm gone. Peace and blessings.